and welcome to the monthly news of One Army, the foundation where we're creating projects to tackle global problems. I'm Kat and I've been a little bit out of the frame of One Army projects because I've been here uh, with the Flip Floppy project where we are currently researching and developing a way how we can use the warmth of the sun to recycle plastic into a big recycled plastic boat. Perfectly cooked well potato. Cooked. And we've been also rebuilding this space after a big fire. And we actually had some recycling machines here as well. So uh, if you ever wanted to see a burnt precious plastic injection machine, let me show you. This is a burnt injection machine. Welcome. Uh, no electronics here. But maybe we can revive it again. Uh, I don't know, we will have a look. So if you have any ideas or experience with burnt machines, let me know. Now I will find a more quiet space because it's a little bit loud. All right, so before going into the projects, um, let's have a quick look and thoughts about things that, that's been happening in the world. Um, first of all, there was World Ocean Day and World Environment Day, which is always like big days for the world of environmentalists and people who want to take action. Um, so a lot of cleanups, a lot of planting trees, doing good, and also organizations and um, governments pledging funding to uh, yeah, protect and conserve um, the environment. Yeah, it's a little bit sad that and crazy that it's a whole uh, generation growing up with this task of restoring this, <laughs> restoring the earth from its, its mess. And in contrast to the movement of masses, um, there was also the G7 summit where the group of seven, the, the largest um, and so-called um, advanced economies, meet and basically talk about how they can join forces to um, tackle global problem problems. So it seems very powerful that the leaders of the seven most wealthy countries sit together to make change. And they did commit to um, a lot of things like having their, their combined emissions until 2030, which is in less than 10 years, improving the climate finances and protecting or conserving 30% of uh, land and oceans. So it sounds like really good goals and, and visions, but to be honest, it sounds also very vague. Probably one of the most tangible goals, at least, was um, to donate 1 billion doses of COVID vaccines to developing countries, which again sounds very generous, um, but it's by far not what's needed. And also coming from the One Army perspective, where we experience and believe in the power of open source, it's really frustrating that they refuse, um, after being asked for it, refuse to share the intellectual knowledge to actually produce, to, to enable every country to produ produce their own vaccine locally and um, then being able to distribute it locally as well. So I can understand that uh, I can really relate to all the criticism they get from these growing masses of uh, worried and, and conscious and, and critical people. So it feels more and more important that we take it into our own hands and try to get push better solutions from ground from like uh, the crowds. So now one case which was celebrated as a success from Greenpeace activists and other organizations, a Dutch court ruled that Shell, one of the 10 most polluting companies in the world, um, is liable for damaging the climate. And this is the first time that a major oil company is being held responsible for contributing to climate change. Shell is now ordered to really drastically change their course and reduce their emissions by 45 percent by 2030. Yeah, so again, that's that that's a huge deal. I'm wondering how they will reinforce it and make sure that Shell actually does it. Um, but at least the pressure, the public pressure is on. So that's a good thing. And um, it also makes it probably easier for every next big climate case uh, in the court to to succeed because they already have one ex success as example. Okay, so now l one last thing on the world stuff. Um, there's been a discovery going around in the internet uh, saying that scientists found a way how to turn PET bottles into vanilla flavoring using an engineered bacteria. And they describe it as a big success and promising way to 
use plastic waste uh, to actually meet the demand of uh, the growing demand of vanillin, which by the way is um, already not mostly uh, made with vanilla beans, but actually uh, using um, a chemical derived from fossil fuels. And this article just sounds super positive about all this discovery and, uh, and the possible use of it. Uh, but in the meantime, they are basically publicly uh, admitting and, and accepting that plastic is being used for food and other products we consume. So it just makes me think either either they actually don't think it's a, it's a problem to uh, use something derived from fossil fuels in something we eat, or am I right to maybe question why they don't, there is no criticism at all in having plastic in our foods. We might as well just eat the plastic then, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know what to think about that. Um, I'd be interested in what um, what your opinions are. So maybe leave a comment. <laughs> all right, now to our One Army projects. Um, and for all Dave Hacken's fans or anyone who is interested in uh, the One Army projects and uh, the vision behind it and thoughts and how it all came together, Dave Hackens gave uh, an interview for the Spaceship Earth podcast. So have fun listening to the Dutch guy. So now at Project Camp, where we are developing a sustainable way of living, at the moment, mostly Dave and Rita have been quite busy uh, making it really nice and uh, planting some trees and basically setting up our base camp there. Dave also has been collecting some water samples from the land and been testing it for the, for the quality for drinking. And also going through the open or solved um, challenges. Check, check, we're not there yet. And problems. I don't know. Okay, let's dive into this. Highway sounds. Yes, I know, sounds very boring, but kind of a big deal. Kind of scared about it, but somewhat positive, it will be okay. So yeah, you can see more in the weekly updates on the Project Camp YouTube channel. And another pretty exciting thing is that we are getting ready to, uh, for other people to get involved. And uh, one of the things we will need is workforce. So it's a specific task that you can help out with your hands. So it's really to, to help us out with a few problems we have. So one obvious one is, uh, I mean, the big problem. We don't have a pizza oven. We would really like a pizza oven. So I would say have a look on their website to see if something fits you. And maybe you can come here. Yeah, and if you can't or don't want to come physically, um, but want to help out with some with pushing some development, uh, you can also push big development. So it's for people that want to contribute to some some big amount for a specific thing. So it could be the wood chipper, it could be the renovation of the kitchen or the workspace or reforesting the land. Uh, this really pushes the project a lot. So if you have some crypto laying around, uh, make sure to check that page. So yeah, have a look at the Project Camp website. We'll probably update that every now and then so you can see the open uh, tasks and uh, needs. Now to Precious Plastic, where we are tackling plastic pollution with a global community of small scale recyclers. And first, a little update from our crew in France. Hello, people. Uh, Joseph here reporting from the Precious Plastic team in France. And I want to talk to you about three different developments that we've had going on over the last couple of months. First one being a CE certification, which is really like the legal requirements for providing machines uh, in Europe or exporting them to other places. And we had to look into this because if we're doing a collaboration somewhere in the world uh, and we're providing machines, uh, then they have to be CE certified. Uh, but, and it's quite complex and daunting at first to uh, see all these requirements, but actually it really helps with development. Uh, so it's been quite interesting uh, looking into this. And uh, we should have a, a, about three of the machines CE'd um, uh, in the next three months. And here's an example of what uh, the CE plate looks like that we would put on the machine. And there you can see it there. And that leads me to number two, which is about the development of the machines in general. So I want to show you what we have been going on with the basic shredder. It is a design that incorporates the different CE requirements. So covering the coupling, covering the, the, the bearing, uh, including a safety mechanism for the hopper. Um, and it, yeah, it works out quite well. And this will end up being the uh, next open source version as well. Uh, it also incorporates a few community uh, feedbacks in terms of the, the size of the uh, shaft. 
Uh, we increased that a little bit. So this is gonna be the next version of the Shredder, uh, which will be released uh, by the end of the year for sure. And the third thing uh, I wanted to report about was the washing system. So we've been working on washing for quite a few years now, have not been able to get a great system yet, but now we're on our third iteration. This is for a collaboration that we're doing in uh, Algeria with the UN Refugee Development Agency. And it's gonna have some power washing that is uh, cleaning the plastic inside this barrel uh, that's being held by these uh, actually food trays. And we hope this is gonna be like a real great um, version that we can release to the community and can be uh, quite a, a good help for cleaning plastic, which is such a big problem. Okay, I think that is it for now and I will send it back to Kat. Yeah, we also had a little comms team doing really good work to compiling a lot of um, resources and stories around the precious plastic community. And uh, we set up a new sheet press workspace in London where they made a really cool pink plastic sheet. And in the meantime, I've been connecting to the East African precious plastic community um, and was actually able to meet a lot of them. And I don't know what about you, but um, I personally always get pretty excited um, about meeting them and hearing their stories. So yeah, here you go, meet some of the Precious Plastic workspaces in Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. Welcome to Precious Plastic Maniata. I'm called Debra. I do with sorting of the plastic. This is the shredding machine. So after the plastic being shredded, we take them into the other machines. I'm Edwin Bongo. I'm in charge of the extrusion machine. This is a lampshade. It's a fruit bowl. Uh, hello everyone, I'm called Silas Solwatch and we use molds. Uh, we have the big five animals, the wall clocks, plates, cups or the flower vessels, pegs for honey, the clothes. And this one is called an abacus. Uh, mostly children use it for counting. Earrings and necklaces. A lot of beautiful things. Thank you very much. Don't throw the plastic away, throw them to us. Hi, my name is Sinan Shitagenda and for four years we've been implementing the precious plastic model here in Uganda outskirts of Kampala. We started with our face shields, uh, this is exactly one of the products we've been making, but right now we are currently using our own molds to make uh, local materials like a face cup, <laughs> own uh, mold to make uh, Tile, tile molds and a number of other products we are currently making over 16 different types of products. I'm Peter Koko and I'm co-founder and CEO at Takataka Plastics. And I'm Oscar Oguan, the marketing and sales manager for Takataka. Yeah, so at Takataka Plastics we have uh, machines like uh, extruders, uh, injection machines and a shredder. And out of those machines we are in position to make different products including these uh, fancy um, wall tiles. Uh, they are purely made from uh, PET uh, plastics collected uh, around the city. Hello, <laughs> my name I'm called Senda Benjamin and with my friend here, Steven. I think I will start with the story of our plastic preneur, how it became. At first I thought plastic bottles was too a lot everywhere and that uh, I was going to make money out of it. <laughs> plastic preneur started with uh, uh, the dream and vision that uh, plastic pr uh, precious plastic gave us when we re when we learned uh, dev in netherlands on the clips that he was putting on youtube we learned that it was possible to make these things from home we built our very first machine that was in 2016 out of a wood. As time went, our colleague together with uh, Soren, we thought of modifying the machine again. And so the new modification of the machine we came up with was the, uh, this injection machine and with a new shredder. We make pegs for hanging clothes. We make rulers for school children. We make cups, we make tiles, face shields, beads, plates, and many other, depending on the need of the community. And so we give trainings to those people who want to use the precious plastic machines. 
I'm Shani from Recycle at Otzi. We are based on Zanzibar, so working on the basic precious plastic principles. We've got three of the machines. Our workshop is now 100% zero waste. All our offcuts and all this little sawdust that we get from after we've finished some of our products, we recycle into these grey products or the black products. Um, yeah, from everything that's mixed together, that's the colour that we get from that and it's quite popular. People really, really enjoy that. Zero waste workshop, yeah, very excited. Hello. Hello. Hey. We are in Jombe Beyond team. We are in Jombe and we are recycling plastic with an injection machine and a compression machine. We are getting the plastics locally and then we with locally produced molds, we are trying to produce um, objects that can be useful for the local community in Jombe, like letters, face shields, tiles, and some plastic sheets. Our main goal is to reduce or to finish all the plastic dumped around Jombe or taken to the dump site. And once we prove the, that someone can run a business like this one and it can be economically sustainable, we want to offer some trainings on machine building, on ra workshop running and on business skills so that more initiatives like this one can be spread in the southern highlands of Tanzania and other parts of Tanzania. It's nice and interesting for us to share ideas with other people, to get connected to the East African community, so we feel much more motivated to go back home and keep on working. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asante Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. workshop in Madari. This is uh, where we uh, start the recycling process a little after we collected everything. After the shredding, our main machine as you can see, and we use uh, separate molds to make different shapes of different products, keychains and different shapes, all that we get through ISK, through our partnership. And um, yeah, this is it. Okay, so today we are visiting Plastic Yurafiki basically the main machine builder in Kenya, but they do a lot more stuff. This is the teacher. Hey, hey. So I'm, I'm Matej Suga. I'm a design teacher here at the International School of Kenya. Uh, Pasiki Rafiki is uh, after, it's an uh, extracurricular activity. Um, we started about three years ago and we, uh, it's run by students um, and we build machines, we create products uh, and we help set up workshops around, around Kenya. Sort of our vision as a club is to, um, you know, Kind of do what uh, precious plastic is doing but just at a smaller scale here in kenya so trying to use these um you know great open source designs you guys have and build machines adapt them for what's available in kenya and then um, help design products that uh, people can replicate um, in other workshops around the country yeah super cool so Bernard, uh, Bernard is one of the people who are now the machine builders he's here, the right? He's the main guy, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, we have built several machines. We have built the extruder. That's an injector. It's an old one, but still working. We also build the shredder. This one we are working on right now. Bicycle shredder that we are working on again. Got also the compression that works to make big plastics. We also have got a charcoal compressor machine. We put charcoal here and we compress it down. And we also peeled this uh, biogas compression. Now here is uh, where you get the food stuff for the school and then it uh, generates the inner energy that we use for this. We have got a washing machine that washes the plastic here that we are working on. You just need to uh, to sit on and it's a washing. And we have peeled a lot of machines, about over 30 of them actually. And now the next project we're building the the sheet press machine. Students engage with the design process for coming up with really cool products like bowls or magnets or jewelry pieces. And then here we have some of the bigger products that students have designed in the past with the desk and the chair and the slingshots and even some of the side coffee tables. So. Yeah, students are very much of the part of the process here and they enjoy working on some of the cool stuff, products that can later be replicated by the Kenyan community here. So actually at Precious Plastic Rafiki, we had a very special guest 
who even named his son, his firstborn son, after Dave. Yes, so Manduku <laughs> has been uh, part of the first Precious Plastic pilot project. So the first time when we went to another country and brought the machines and trained other people, Manduku was part of it. What was it, four years ago, yeah, five years four ago? Yeah, four years. And um, a lot of the people from that project kind of went and left, but Manduku really stuck around and uh, always continued working with the extrusion machine mainly, yeah. really improving his technique. And now he's going to show you what he's been doing. Yes, here is Manduku, and I'm proud to show you some of the products we have done with the extrusion machine. We are trying to innovate more new ways of coming up with new products in the market so that they can be reused day in day out. So I've come up with a, a way of working with the extrusion machine and here are some of the products we have done. As you can see these are the fruit baskets with the strings you can weave and they come up with new products. And we have also come up with the idea of making a chain link which looks like this one so that you can keep away your chickens, your goats. Anyway, how you can think on how to use it in your compound. You just make a mold, either in a metal or in a timber, just like this. Then you go to the extrusion machine, then you will be just rotating like this, and at the end of the day you will just have a filament of this type. Then when you have this type of filament, you only need to start weaving, like this one, like this way. It's pretty impressive. This must have been taking you a long time. But the consistency of that film is pretty impressive and also just the quality of those, those products. So, yeah, thank you for this inspiration, Mantuku. Yeah. And he's always keen on trying out new stuff, so uh, make sure to uh, follow up. Yeah, big up for Mantuku and all these people with their a great passion for what they do. And obviously there's been much more going on in the community. Um, and it's been like a real pleasure to scroll through the social media feeds and just seeing all those machine developments, cool products and activities. So thank you all. Um, it's really, really uh, motivating to see that. And last but not least, fixing fashion. So here we are mostly at the moment just gathering feedback and observing the community, how they um, receive the project. And it's been re received really well. Um, there is a lot of community fixing coming through as well and still some articles being written so so that's really good to see and thank you to our patrons who helped us voting for the new fixing fashion badge which will be um, available soon i hope and it's actually quite interesting to look at this project from here from the kenyan perspective because fixing and repairing is such a normal thing here um, so there is tailors um, and repairers everywhere on the streets and people keep and fix their, their clothes and things literally until it, it dissolves, basically. Um, so it just shows again how many of those these problems originate in this developed wealthy system, which makes it easier and cheaper to be wasteful than to be resourceful and careful with our stuff. Anyway, here are my latest fixes. So these trousers are pretty broken down already and I've been fixing them front and back probably like a lot of times but they're still going so for work that's just fine and i also have my favorite shirt actually my mom has been patching this quite cool patch on the back of the shirt to cover all this weak material so i can carry it for a little bit longer so yeah if you have any fixes make sure to share it and if you like our projects and can support even if it's just something small like one ice cream a month Become one of our One Army supporters on Patreon. That's it for this month. Keep fixing and recycling and doing all the good things you do. And see you in the next videos. <laughs>